Hello, everybody. Ron Callis here with another episode of Automation Unplugged. This is episode 91. Uh, I am very happy to bring this show to you. We are sponsored by my day job over at One Firefly. Uh, today is Wednesday, November 20th. Uh, we have a big week next week, Thanksgiving, so a big national holiday here in the U.S., uh, maybe the biggest holiday. And uh, we're coming to you at 12.30 p.m., so we're coming to you right on time. So thank you for joining me. Uh, super excited about my guest. Uh, uh, we have Bob Cole from uh, the infamous uh, Worldwide Stereo joining us. Uh, before I bring Bob in, let me just click over on my technology. Let me verify that uh, we are, in fact, streaming live. So bear with me here. All right. And uh, I'm excited because I actually have my, uh, my Internet service. For those of you that have watched the last few shows, I'm coming to you from my new house. And uh, I've been working off of a little AT&T hotspot uh, while I was waiting for my one gig fiber service to get installed. And so it was installed a couple of days ago. And uh, in theory, uh, again, I don't want our Murphy's Law to take uh, effect here. But in theory, this is going to stream nicely uh, now that I have great uh, uh, bandwidth. Um, and I already see, so we got some people uh, giving comments. We have Emily Cole of Worldwide Stereo. She goes, woohoo. All right, Emily. Thank you for that. And uh, without further ado, let me bring in our guest. So let's bring in uh, the one and only Bob Cole. Awesome. Uh -huh. Hey, ta da! <laughs> Uh, I, Bob, uh, you're going to love this. So a gentleman named uh, Peter, he, uh, I just threw it up on the screen. He says, Worldwide Stereo Rocks. Uh, would you agree with that, Bob? Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. But here's, here's what's even cooler. He says, so does one firefly. All right. Now we're talking. Good job. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate that. So, Bob, thank you. Uh, you are a very busy man, and uh, you're pulled in a lot of directions. And I'm, I'm honored to have you on here as our, our 91st guest on Automation Unplugged. Took you long enough. My goodness. I, what was I thinking? Why, I why were you not guest number it. one? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I, I feel bad now. But no. You're here now. So, Bob, where are you coming to us from? Uh, from 203 Shady Nook Hill. It's where I live in sunny Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Awesome. And you uh, were mentioning to me that on occasion you'll do a work from home. So is, is this a work from home Wednesday? Yes, absolutely it is. Okay. Man, we have lots of folks jumping in here, Bob. We're going to, uh, because this is a live show, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some quick shout outs here and then we're going to jump in. Uh, Laura says, let's get this party started. Uh, all right, Laura, let's do it. And uh, we have Angel. He goes, uh, welcome, Bob Cole. Thank you, Angel. Got people. Uh, Mackenzie just jumped in. She says, welcome back. Uh, well, welcome, Bob. So glad to have you. All right, let's jump into it. Bob, uh, you are uh, the fearless leader of Worldwide Stereo. Uh, you very impressively just celebrated your 40th year in business. And I, uh, first of all, congratulations. That's Thank nothing short of, it's amazing. Um, and thanks for I, having me, by the way. No, it's, I, I, as you said, I, I should have had you much, much earlier, but you're here now. So we're going to rock and roll. Um, Bob, I generally like, uh, although I would think most people know you, there's going to be some watching that don't know you. Um, can you give us a bit of, uh, you have 40 years to go through, just kind of give us in your own words, your 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 background? Wow. Well, I, Take as long as you want, by the way. You have a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, well, originally I was a psychologist. I did that for 10 to 12 years. I was successful. I was happy. But things... Uh, we ran out of money, you know, the, the, the country's focus on uh, helping 
people with those kinds of emotional issues was, was drifting during the time, during the Nixon years. So uh, I took a break and I wound up working for this franchise company, which was Worldwide Stereo. Uh, they went out of business. I opened my own store. Seemed like a natural transition. It was a lark. I had no money. I had no profit making background, uh, but I knew about people. You know, that's what I did all those years. Um, since then, you know, we've grown from a little tiny store. We have two uh, brick and mortar stores, one in Ardmore, one in Montgomeryville. Uh, we have a significant custom integration business. I mean, we were doing custom back in 1980. Uh, so we were early on board. Um, you know, part of that was my feeling that people really didn't understand how much electronics could bring to their life. You know, they were still thinking just buying a pair of stereo. I'm thinking, well, why don't you have that stereo in your bathroom? What a great idea. And uh, we went into the e-commerce world. We touched on it in 1994, but we really didn't hit it hard till 2007, 2008. So we got about a hundred people working for us and it's a happy place. What, what, uh, you have three locations and they're all in the, are they, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, are they all in the Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia area? Yeah, actually we have two stores in the Philadelphia marketplace. We have another location, which is a distribution center also in the Philadelphia market. And then we have, uh, another warehouse and offices. So we have four locations technically. Okay. And give, uh, if you can explain a little bit more of the breakdown, um, you're, are, are you primarily retail? Uh, I, you just mentioned e-commerce. So it sounds like you have a, a healthy e-commerce component. Um, you know, help the, help my audience understand a little bit more. What does your business look like today? Like, where is that? Yeah. What type of business is that? It's a really good question because any one of uh, the three divisions uh, stand alone, can stand alone, but they don't. They don't stand alone. Uh, I don't know anybody else who is integrating three divisions in the way that we are. They really support one another. So uh, our, our custom integration business, for example, much of that comes out of the retail experience. Uh, so the retail stores up front for doing custom install design work, home automation, you know, all that stuff, but it's also a retail store and they support one another. Our e-commerce, uh, I mean, e-commerce has huge velocity and, and that gives us uh, a lot of authority with our manufacturers. Uh, so when you titrate that down all the way to the showroom floor, we can get product quicker than, than most other dealers uh, who have showrooms. Uh, online is also the natural advertising medium for for our retail and our custom um, divisions. So they all work very closely together and they support one another. I don't run them independently, you know, and one division will do well for a while and support the other two, et cetera. So it's been a really good family. So it's, it's sort of like the moonshot, you know, e-commerce, which we really pushed and spent a lot of money well, that raised the the water for uh, custom and for retail. The it sounds like we got a phone going off. Well, that, there. that's a spam call. Nobody uses this phone. Nobody uses this phone. So this business model, where you have these three divisions working together, I mean, it sounds like you are, you know, quite the maverick in inventing this method of operating. How did that? A, how did that come about? And then B, how do you run the business today? I mean, do you have a leadership team, a management team? You have three locations. There's a lot of moving parts. Well, that's just a great question. So, you know, it's very easy for me to say I have forgotten more than most people know. Uh, and that's sure. surely true because I'm a hands-on guy. Uh, I've done lots of install work. I've done lots of programming. Uh, I built the initial store. I built the addition to the initial store. I did the build out on the second store. Um, the, and the whole flow of e-commerce, I mean, you know, pretty much I 
my hands were dirty in all aspects of my company. Um, and that was great fun. And that was the foundation. But at the same time, I have these employees, these guys, these partners, these people I work with. Uh, I struggle with the word employee because uh, we really are partners. We all work together and they've been with me a long time and they just assume the responsibilities as the company grows. Now in the last few years, uh, getting to the part where I have forgotten, there's all kinds of new technology that I don't understand. Uh, how our servers work for e-commerce, even though I built the first ones, I have no clue. Uh, I have a management committee of five people um, who, you know, where the rubber meets the road, they, they pretty much run the company day to day. Uh, and beyond that, I have senior management, which includes the two gentlemen that run the stores. Uh, so the company pretty much runs itself. Uh, you know, I'm the front man now. That's what, my, what, it, what, what does a typical week look like for you, Bob? Uh, the, the easier answer. Is, is there such a thing as a typical, typical no, week? No, but it's a, it's a great question. Because you know, I, I, you know, I'm a man in transition. I'm 71 years old. Uh, I have I have to face the reality that I need to take care of my company long term. You know, it was never the plan to turn over the company to my kids. It was never the plan to, okay, I'm done. Let's just close it down, which I could certainly do and would be a lot easier. Uh, but I'm committed to the family and having it go on. Uh, so I'm available to anybody, anytime, and I'm certainly the in-house counselor. Uh, but in any given week, you know, I'll be traveling. I'll be going to events, both uh, philanthropy type events. I'm on several boards, most of which are medical because I'm just interested. Uh, but it's nice to have my face there. Uh, I'm on some business advisory councils. Um, you know, I write copy, I visit the stores, I visit the office, I hug a lot of people. Um, I, that's pretty much my role. I no longer dig holes, uh, though the other day I was fixing the bathroom plumbing. Or you, well, at, you know, at one of the stores. Who better than Bob Cole to fix the broken toilet? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bob, in 2018, when you turned 70, you were inducted into the CT Hall of Fame. And that's a, a pretty prestigious group that have been inducted into that Hall of Fame, including, if I'm not correct, Steve Jobs. Right. Yeah, he was one of the lesser people. Yeah, yeah one of the smaller people. Can you, what did that mean? I mean, what, how did you feel when, when you learned of that honor? It was a big deal. Uh, there aren't that many retailers. Uh, though I may have gotten in for being a philosopher, but there's not that many retailers. Bjorn down out of Texas, Walt Stinson out of uh, Listen Up, uh, and me. So, you know, I was flattered, but you're on this dais and there's all these people who invented incredible technology and have done incredible things. I remember somebody asking me at the store one day, Oh, why the heck did you get in? What did you ever do? And my head. I'm sure they said that in jest, I would imagine. No, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they were serious. No, yeah, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't being a, a, he just didn't understand it. He didn't, you know, to him, I'm just a merchant. Uh, and surely the award goes way beyond the merchant aspect. But one of my installers, my main installer, Frank Pollock, he spoke up and, and he said, uh, well, we're with where the rubber meets the road. Uh, these guys who invent all this stuff, if it wasn't for people like Bob, who would be presenting the technology? Who would be explaining it? Who would be selling it? I mean, you can invent all the X10s you want, but if you don't have somebody who's selling that product, it's just not happening. I remember uh, I was, in a very fortunate corporate uh, board meeting, it was a meeting of CEOs uh, called by the head of Har Harman. Uh, but there was a guy from IBM, there was uh, 
the guy who uh, first designed the, the first Tesla car. I mean, these were all big people. And as they're going around, I'm wondering, why am I even there? And at the, at the end, it realized everything was funneling to me because that was how their stuff gets out. And that's what we do. That's what we do in the consumer technology industry. And that's where we fre fre frequently fall short. Sorry. Frequently. Every once in a while. We'll, we'll edit that out in post. Weekly. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no. We'll fix that. Yeah, we'll fix that. A little bit of audio processing. Uh, Bob, I know because I've, I've heard uh, from others that, that you have a philosophy uh, and going back to you as a philosopher of, of, uh, I, I actually wrote it down here. Uh, doing well by doing good. What what does that mean for you? Is that how you live? Is that how you run your business? Is that how you think? What does that mean to you? You know, it's all of the above. You know, uh, and a lot of people think it's just about philanthropy. It's not. You know, if you're my customer and you walk in the store and, and you know, back in the day, you wanted a Marantz receiver, a pair of Thunder Lizards, and a BIC turntable. Well, I know, I know a hundred times more about hi-fi than you do. I'm going to ask, well, what for? You know, well, it's, that's what you think you should buy, and that's what you think you can afford. But you know, what kind of music do you listen to? Is this stuff really going to serve you? Uh, so, doing good by you in that case is making sure you're getting the right stuff. Uh, and that's something that, that I really promoted to all my people and everybody at Worldwide Stereo was a salesperson one way or the other, you know, from the warehouse, the accounting department, all the way up. It's all about improving the quality of people's lives. And that's doing good. And when you do that, they tend to give you money. Uh, I, I'm no saint. You know, I do a lot of stuff. Uh, what are what are some of the things I know that uh, you are involved with the Philadelphia Ronald McDonald House? You are involved with a, a number of medical boards and and groups. Uh, you were actually Ronald McDonald. I have some notes here. You were just honored at a Philadelphia Flyers game out yeah, of the ice. That. That sounds pretty. Um, yeah, so tell tell my audience about that. What? How did that go down? I mean, you know, that was pretty cool. You know, I really don't need a thank you, but it's nice to be acknowledged. It's nice to every once in a while I have a clue that what you did made a difference and that people sure. get it. Uh, so they had asked if they could honor me, and I've always said no. But uh, you know, frankly, we need the press. It's, it's people like doing business with people who are doing good things. So uh, they said they were going to honor me uh, at a Flyers game. And, you know, I wasn't really keen or clear on what that meant. What it meant is they put me up on the Jumbotron, the brand new giant Jumbotron. Uh, and Susan Campbell, who runs the Ronald McDonald houses in Philly, which are the original ones, as well as the, this division, gave a little three minute speech uh, of what. I have done, but I said I wouldn't do it if they don't say Bob at Worldwide Stereo. You know, they had to, I wanted them to say Worldwide Stereo because, yeah, sure, I made it happen, but I couldn't do it without Worldwide Stereo. And like people applauded. It, it was, and I got a jersey from Bob Kelly. Do you know who Bob Kelly or Bob's, Bob Kelly? You know who he is? I've heard the name, yeah. Okay, so he was one of the enforcers, the Broad Street Bullies, back when they won the first Stanley Cup. So uh, he was the guy that gave it to me. He was a very cool guy. Uh, do you have it up on your wall? Do you have it framed? You know, I don't know what to do. Sometimes I want to wear it, but then I thought I should frame it and tell people I played forward back in the 70s, you know? I, uh, that'll get you more chicks for sure. Yeah. So, But that was pretty cool. But so doing well by doing good, even that. So that's philanthropy. Uh, and... You know, there's nothing, there's very little in life that's better than than being able to help children. And uh, and what do you get Bob Cole for Christmas? It makes my family crazy. I own a store with every toy I possibly could want. You know, right. get me a tie, 
Uh, so uh, two Christmases ago, I'm sitting 10 o'clock in the morning, people are opening presents and I get a text. You know about theater, it's about it suspending your disbelief. It's from the, the chief head nurse at the St. Christopher's pediatric oncology floor. Now that's a lousy name. That's a, that's a bad place to be. And she's texting me, she said, I just want you to know, it's hard to tell the story actually, that I'm sitting here with 10 children who are facing what none of us should ever have to face. And they're all laughing and they're all just having a great time in the theater that you've built, you know? It's like, okay, so for two hours, these kids are suspending their disbelief. They're not thinking about chemo or the, the cords that are coming out of their body. And, and my God, it's been a home run. So we got one at St. Chris's, we got one at two uh, Ronald McDonald houses. And it's like the, the most popular thing. I, I would and that's think- a metaphor for doing good because in your house, you should have a home theater for that very reason. Uh, no, amen. Uh, try to convince my wife. I'm going to set up that phone call for right, after this. Year number. We'll, we'll make that happen. I, I would. Uh, I have a lot of things I want to talk to you about, and time is clicking by quickly here. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna jump to another uh, topic that's kind of. It's in the news. Uh, I don't know if it's hyperbole or if it's reality, but you're on the front line. You and your team are certainly on the front line. So I'd love your two cents on this. And that is, you know, there's a common perception, maybe reality, that millennials don't know what good music is. <laughs> they listen to music, oh. but they don't know what good music is. And can you, t what are you seeing on the street? Are, are they listening to their MP3s on Bluetooth speakers and they're satisfied or are they discovering two channel? And what are you seeing? Wow. So uh, the, the key answer is yes, they're discovering two channel if given the opportunity. Um, what, what comes out of my mouth initially is in many respects, they don't know any better. Uh, they were raised in an environment where they had huge selection. They had these headphones. It was background all the time for them. Uh, and, and the thought of having, a system set up where the performers are actually live in front of you just never occurred to them. Um, so in many cases, they're difficult and they want it now. They're, they're certainly one of the toughest customers if they come in the store, but they want to touch, they want to listen. Uh, and if given the opportunity, they will step up uh, to, to better sound but they haven't had the opportunity for the most part. I know that when I just- And I'm date myself, Well, no, but I'll, I'll date myself. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Gen Xer, I'm 41. I, I graduated from, I, I went to college in 1996. And in 1996, I was paying a kid on campus, the one kid on campus at Virginia Tech that had a CD burner a uh, hundred dollars per disc to burn mp3s onto a disc i think mp3s had been invented as a technology i want to say in the last 12 months or 24 months some, right. sometime right there and the idea of putting hundreds of songs on a disc and then what became an ipod ipod a number of, like that i was at that infancy uh but there's a whole generation that has only known that. Yes, yeah, so they inherited it. And what an opportunity now. And what's happening uh, real time right now as we speak, uh, people are beginning to appreciate and looking for something more. Uh, they just, just don't, want, you know, the bad part is headphones are really easy. And now we got Bluetooth speakers and people go, wow, this sounds fabulous for something that size. Well, that's right. It does sound fabulous for something that size, but it doesn't sound good. You know, it doesn't sound great. Maybe it sounds good, but it doesn't sound great. 
So with the new technology we have today and the new control systems, we can have that huge selection. I have a room server in my house. I have over, I don't know, 10,000 songs on this server. Most of them are high resolution, but I'm playing them through a pair of Bo, uh, not those, uh, Bowers and Wilkins 802s. So the performers are in my room, you know, and it's spectacular. So you can have both. And uh, as a lot of technology becomes more accessible, I think people will be looking for more, you know, something like a better experience. How do you not get bored with a pair of Apple headphones in your ears like I see you wearing right now? <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> yeah. I use those to tie up Christmas presents. I don't know. Some people. Yeah, no, it's I, I, I'm only doing this to, to kill any reverb from my audio. That's, that's the only reason. No, it's okay. I, that's funny. So what what do your staff, your your team, your sales team, what is the, the coaching or the mentorship that you take them through uh, and or do they need it at this point in terms of educating that customer that walks in that thinks they need that Bluetooth speaker? And I'm not knocking Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. They have a role. If you're going to the beach, bring your Bluetooth speaker and jam out on the beach. Um, it wouldn't be all you're listening to. And, and here, here's another uh, interesting statistic. Uh, we don't do a lot of production homes, but typically in a new production home, uh, people want four TVs, one for the main area, one for the master bedroom, and a couple for the kids. Well, you know what? The kids don't want TVs now. So the average production home is getting two TVs. That's a broad generalization, but it's pretty accurate. Um, I forget your question now. <laughs> no, I was asking you about educating the the, oh, yeah. the, the so, person that walks in on two channel and just how you your team approaches that. Well, some are some are better than others, and you know we have an older staff predominantly. Uh, my younger staff are really making it happen right now. Older staff, when a boomer comes in, baby boomer, uh, they kind of okay do boomer what do, but uh, strategically, it's the why. It's why we do what we do. And the why is to make you feel good. So are those headphones making you feel good, Ron? Honestly? Not I particularly, so. no. I no, actually, I, I think I'm throwing them away after this podcast. Uh, uh, so for sure. here's how the old timer does it. How I show them why. I mean, people can come in looking for directions. And I'll say, you want to hear something really outstanding? And many people say, no, I just want directions. Well, with a little pizzazz and charm. No, I just want to help me out. I want your opinion on this. And if I really want to push it, I'll say, what kind of music don't you like? Now, in the old days, they used to say country. And now many people will say hip hop. But I'll put one piece on, on a really outstanding system. And I'll wait for them to smile. And they'll smile. They'll go, I say, okay, why are you smiling? Well, I thought I hated country. This sounds great. I want to cry. That's how you make it happen. That's how you show them the why. That's one of the ways. But, you know, the experience of a theater, same deal. Why do you have a theater? It's not just, it's not to watch a movie, right? We have a manifesto that I wrote up for the company. You, you want a theater so that you can leave your presence and be somewhere else. You want to be the lead guitarist in that rock group, or you want to be, you know, the heroine who just saved the day against all odds. And we can make that happen. Everybody in our industry can make that happen. It's and we need to get it's we huge. need to get better at it. You're clearly one of the best. I, I have, Bob, we have a number of comments and I, I just want to acknowledge our audience. So I'm going to put some of the comments up here. We have Cameron. He says, uh, keep helping kids be kids. Well done, Bob and team. And uh, I have uh, Magnolia, uh, Maggie. She goes, millennials have excellent taste in music. What are you talking about, Bob? Well, look at her dress. Of course she does. Yeah, she clearly has good taste. And uh, let's look here. Chris I, Gamble. Did, I just want to clarify. I didn't say anything about taste. I said, like, they haven't had the experience of 
real music. Now, I think I'm the one that probably said that. And I was probably inappropriate in saying that. I, what we were referencing is the high performance speaker, or the, the audio that can come from quality gear. And then Mario, I'm assuming by this comment, Bob, that he maybe is on your team, but Mario says, how smart is your staff? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mar Mario's been with me forever. I love you, Mario. Uh, hey, Mario, that's awesome. And then uh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, goodness. Got Chris. He's picking on me. He said, Ron, you do need headphones. All right, Chris. Got it. All right. Uh, Lexi says, well done, Worldwide Stereo. So proud. Got a very active audience today. So, Bob, I, I'm, I'm going to get you for a little bit more. So I want to take this again down a different direction. And I, I understand that you have a, a very large team, but you also very interestingly have had very low turnover, right? So your staff stay with you. You just mentioned Mario. He's been with you a long time. Um, and, and many of your staff have been with you a long time. And how do you, how do you do that? Is there a secret or kind of what's your approach to people? Uh, and how have you accomplished that over the years? Well, you know, again, it's doing well by doing good and doing well is keeping a professional staff. You know, if I want to, to monetize, uh, that aspect, uh, Customers like to buy from happy people. You know, you got a miserable salesperson. You don't want to buy from that person. So uh, certainly that was always my goal. But, you know, fundamentally, I general, genuinely care. And I want my folks to genuinely care. And I try and make sure that everybody gets the message of what we do and what we can do in terms of improving people's lives. I mean, there's nothing that we do that people need. You know, it, it's something they can have that, you know, turns out to become a need, you know, eventually or a passion. Uh, but I think fundamentally it's because I've always been grateful of, uh, to everyone who works with me for what they do, even though, again, I pay them. Uh, I, you do. They do require you to pay them. They don't work for free. You know, I, I sometimes I wonder why. And I think Mario may probably not want to get paid after today, but um, <laughs> it, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very egalitarian. I, I'm very like, okay, I'm the boss, I'm the owner, but please give me some grief. Tell me what you don't like. You know, I've always been open to that. Uh, but I think it's more that we make our decisions based on, is that the right thing to do? I mean, I've lost a lot of money over the years making that kind of decision. Um, I mean, there's a lot of product that I, a really good example, uh, back in the day, beta. Beta is it. Beta was best. Beta got all the press. I knew that they weren't making it in Japan anymore. I knew they were closing it down, so I wouldn't sell it. And those customers who wanted to buy us, I'm sorry, I, I can't sell it to you. Uh, and they went somewhere else. Those customers all came back and said, you were right. You told the truth. I'm going to buy here. You know, and, and that's always been the goal. So it, it works with my salesman, you know. Bob, you are, you, you are 71. Two, I have, I have, a, I have a, a twofer, two, two questions in one. How, how much longer do you see yourself wanting to be active in the business and and the answer could be forever and there'll be one day where you're not here right and you are um obviously a keystone for our industry and what what do you want your legacy to be oh that's the big question that's that's the 10 point question yeah yeah uh I, I would like people to say that he really meant what he said, you know, that he really means to do well by doing good, that it actually works as a business philosophy. Uh, I would like to think that I helped uh, in, in many little tiny ways, keeping the industry responsible 
to do well by doing good, to, to make a difference in people's lives. I've never hesitated to tell the manufacturer, that's just a stupid idea. And it's not good for the customers. Uh, so I just would like my legacy to be that I was honest. That's an amazing legacy uh, to leave. You had mentioned to me uh, off camera that there was a time where manufacturers and you have obviously deep relationships with many of them, if not most of them, and they would simply go to their labs, cook up new things, new technologies, new add add-ins or plugins or whatever. And they would just bring it to you and say, here, it's going to be ready to sell in three months. And that led to some pretty obvious flops. And I'm going to say 3D TV as an example. You gave me that example. It's a wonderful example. Uh, and uh, it, you said that's changing. And manufacturers are, are, are all the manufacturers changing? Are all of them coming and, and coming to the people on the ground that are, are representing them and selling it? Explain, as you said it, you know, uh, uh, explaining it, uh, uh, what well, you gave me three, you said explaining it, selling it, and you gave me one more. Um, is that changing? Uh, I'm going to tell you the flesh is weak, uh, and big POs make a difference to these guys. Uh, but depending on the manufacturer, it's been my recent experience, uh, ages ago, uh, manufacturers, it was a perk and they'd fly us to Tokyo and we'd have meetings. We'd talk about what the American consumer wants, what would work, what would be interesting, cool, et cetera. And then they'd do whatever they want. And, and a lot of times there were cultural differences that got in the way there, but also technological. Look what we just invented. This is neat. Here, put it in here. Charge people an extra thousand bucks like 3D TV. Uh, and there's really no reason for people to buy a product like that. Uh, now, most many of those guys who were really who really didn't listen uh, or weren't really interested in what people wanted, uh, just in selling, they were interested in selling what they created. Uh, most of them have gone belly up or changed or merged. Um, but uh, 2001 and then 2008 uh, gave a huge dose of humility to a lot of people, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of people like me. Um, and, and actually, I wasn't going to give any examples, but I'll give you an example. Sony. Sony, huge, successful company. They made whatever they felt like making. That, that happily, they had a lot of really good ideas but it was love it or leave it. And they really weren't that interested in their opinion. And now, especially in that realm, uh, they are the most interested uh, in what consumers want to buy. They have more focus groups than any other company that I'm currently dealing with. And they're really, really interested specifically down in the nitty gritty area uh, of what the people want. You know, what are they going to appreciate? A simple, simple example is, you know, everybody loved, you know, the whole form and function discussion. They love flat panel TVs and they're so popular and they're so cool and they got bigger and thinner and bigger and thinner. Meanwhile, they're sounding worse and worse and worse and worse. You know, they sound like a telephone answering machine. So then the consumers got to buy other stuff to make it sound good. And of course I encourage that behavior, but Sony, and I believe they're the only one who really stepped up and they made the entire display a speaker. So if you just want a good TV that sounds better than a telephone answering machine, Sony built it and they built it based on feedback. You gotta not let this stuff sound so crappy. And and I know that Sony's doing. I mean, there was a time, you know, not too long ago, where Sony was not doing that great in our channel, and now they're they're booming. 
They're killing it. They're killing it. So I think and, that's and a lot it. of this, you know, I mean, before, you know, part of it again is cultural. I mean, you go to Japan and they used to be very stoic and everybody's in a black tie and suit. And now, you know, they have very little electricity, they don't have air conditioning and, and everybody's less formal and everybody's more humble. Uh, now, I've been successful, but I'm not Best Buy, I'm a small dealer, but I've had the heads of Sony, you know, I get a call on a Wednesday, can you meet in your store on Saturday morning at eight o'clock? We want to talk to you. I mean, that's just great. And I'm a yeah. little guy, but they respect the opinion of the little guy. Two last questions for you, Bob, then I'm gonna get you out of here, get you back to your regularly scheduled programming. One is you are a longstanding member of ProSource. And uh, for that, I know you were president of HES. HES uh, uh, ultimately was absorbed into or became ProSource from BrandSource. And you know, if you, th there are gonna be people listening uh, to this either live or later uh, in video or podcast. What's your, your position on why a reseller, why an integrator, why a retailer should be a member of a, a buying group and, and per perhaps pro source and or other groups. Why, why should they do that? I'm glad you generalized that in general. So, uh, I mean, pro source significantly, I, I can't say enough uh, about how they've enhanced my business, both in, in deals, in opportunity, in, in representing me and my channel. Um, but a very big reason to be in a buying group is nobody likes being alone. I don't care how smart you are. You don't like being alone. You like to be able to sit down and talk to your brother or your sister about business. And the channel for doing that uh, is in the more successful uh, buying groups like ProSource, HTSA is another very good example. Uh, where fellowship is a big part of the program. So at any point in time, I can pick up the phone and I know whatever problem I'm having, I know somebody who's going to be having the same problem and I can talk to them. But the, the deals, uh, it's also a response, especially when you go to the bigger, more successful buying groups. Uh, th there's been a, an amalgamation of a lot of uh, organizations in our industry uh like Denon Morantz is now part of Sound United, which is part of, you know, so there's like eight major vendors in this one group. Um, you know, we just have to attend to that. And it's hard to attend to that when you're just a small dealer and all of a sudden you, you're not meeting with one vendor, you're meeting with eight at a time. So buying groups are very, very important. Some are more effective than others. I've right, been Bob. forced to be the most effective, which is why I am a member. And I, I know Bobby as your, uh, your, 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 what is he called? Your district manager, your regional mm -hmm. manager. The Bobby uh, Dodge, good man. Bobby Dodge is a huge advocate for you. He loves Emily, uh, who runs your marketing. By the way, mm -hmm. your marketing is amazing. So uh, from one marketer to another, you guys are rock stars. Emily, good job. And uh, uh, I have the most important question, Bob, I'm going to close with, which is, this is very profound. Uh, I understand you own a Porsche GTS. I do. And I, I need to know how fast have you driven in that Porsche GTS? And when was the last time you drove that fast? Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's 160. And that was last summer. Uh, this this was on a oh, I road, on a car. on the turnpike. Where was this? No, this was on a track. I track my car. It's a little hobby I have, but it's also my day to day drive car. So you when you when you when you track it, does that mean you just go and you time it, or do you run head to head against others? It depends. Uh, in, in this car, it's uh, it's like single car events. So you're on the track with other people. But you, there's an etiquette. It's not really a race. I have a racing license, but I don't race against others, except I do Bertel Roost, which is an open car, you know, Formula 3 race thing that we do. So you do race? Is this the car that you race? 
Yeah, I, not the GTS, the Bertel Roos cars I race. All right. But I prefer um, to sail. You prefer to sail? So is sailing your primary hobby? That would be my primary hobby. That would be my how, primary passion. How how much time do you get out on the water? Uh, it depends. You know, if I'm sailing the main, that's like eight days up, eight days back, and maybe a month there. So every opportunity I get. You sail up to Portland? I usually go further north, much further north. Much further north. Well, Bob, what is the best way? Anyone watching or listening and they want, they just have to get in touch with you. Uh, what is the best way for anyone to do that? Well, worldwidestereo.com. Just leave a message. All right. So oh, I just. There it is. <laughs> look at that. So I just copied and pasted that. And. Uh, to my audience, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, there's so many good messages here. By the way, Jamie Lee, uh, Bob says you don't look a day over 27. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh wow, she's cute. Yeah, there you go. There she is. So you gotta you gotta reach out. And uh, Jillian says, uh, I think Steve Morrison Warmer would agree. We miss 3D TVs. So there you go. <laughs> So, Julian. so, Bob, it was a pleasure having you on Automation Unplugged and uh, real honor to have you on the show. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a great day and have a great holiday. Thank you, sir. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, guys, gals, there you have it. Episode 91. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, certainly enjoyed having you all uh, participate. It's always fun when I get uh, a lot of interaction. I, I try to pay as close attention to that as possible to put that up on the screen. So until next time, if you are watching or listening, don't forget to, uh, I'm going to put this up here, go over to One Firefly's Instagram page. So go to Instagram and then uh, we are at One Firefly LLC. We're just approaching uh, uh, almost a thousand followers. Uh, so certainly would love to have you go over there and check us out. And uh, on that note, until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace.